Yo, what's up? All right, yeah. I don't know what happened. Like you muted? Did, did you mute? I was muted this? too, man. I was muted too. There it's was like no it. volume. What's I'm going, on, you guys? Whoa, whoa. This is Addict. We're here with the Addict Show. I'm here with Forte. You know, we got some good topics for you. Some good information going down, man. Uh, sooner or later, BG will be here. BG does get here. Sometimes you know how BG is. He gets left and right, pulling all sorts of different way, and he sometimes forget stuff but he the invite has been sent whatever he shows up he shows up so uh let's go ahead and uh you know first off forte because i forgot to do it because you know clearly we messed up i messed up not you I'll, I'll take full responsibility forte what have you been doing what have you been playing uh man uh not playing returnal because i refuse to uh have my my progress wiped every time I die or not die. I don't care about dying, but because of things that are unforeseen in a game that might have some stuff to do with a system or it might just be the incompetency of a developer. But I actually like house marks. So I'm going to give them a pass. But outside of the little bit I did play of that, um, I did go in and play uh, some RE8. Um, actually really, really cool. Um, tried to play a little bit Destiny today, but we already know how day one Destiny is when it comes to a new season. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. You're basically not playing. You're basically not playing. It's kind of crazy how many years have went by and they still ain't been up and for grass. still, every, every, it's like, like I'm not any kind of like networker or anything like that, but one would think by now you would have some form of, of solution. Well, did you, did you hear that the supposedly cross play got activated today? That's why they're having issues. Oh, see that. See stuff like that makes sense, but when you do that, that that's the only thing I can give them because it's a regular season update. Forte yeah, yeah. crossplay wasn't supposed to come out till next season though, so somebody jumped the gun at Bungie <laughs> like a whole season early. So someone's like, "Don't hit this button." I'm gonna hit this button and see what happens. <laughs> this, they just sit there. They 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 hit the uh, they hit the left button. They, on they hit the, they hit the, the panic right. button, man. They oh, said they said don't hit this button. Even if you're colorblind, this button's red. If it looks red, <laughs> purple, if it looks uh, anything close like it could be inside the red family, don't push that button. And they pushed and somebody it. pushed the button. They, they but, had uh, to, man. Yeah, that's what that's definitely what happened. But you know, outside of that, man, just ah, oh, man, just getting caught up on a lot of um, FPS boost games and stuff. I've been playing a lot of Battlefield, playing a lot of um, Titanfall Two. I'm actually working on a video for. Um, fps boost and um uh, i know because people have been getting on me about videos for a while so that's the one i've been working on but yeah i've just been enjoying a lot of those fps boost games and just enjoying 120 frames per second man you know and, and shout out to um ea and bioware for giving mass effect legendary edition 120 frames per second at 1440p and i am the first person that will always tell people that frame rate matters more than resolution and 1440p is a but, perfect resolution we, to play at frame rate matters but i do feel like if that resolution isn't at least at a good point for the fr it, it, it devalues the whole game too so well it depends on the game if we're talking about because i know you got to think about you know a lot of those original those old xbox one games like battlefield being the 720p and um the original titanfall running at what nine nine hundred p or something like that I, I i i do get that but it's like as long as i don't see that in newer games that's what i that's the thing that i would have a problem with like i don't want to see 120 frames per second and you know 900p in a in a brand new game that comes out i don't want to see something like that but when it comes to like the older games and stuff that's fine um but this just shows me one thing though the promise of the future it's like games that run at you know 1800p and 60 frames per second now because they can't hit that um they can't hit that um that 4k mark who's not to say that with this um with this new ability for them to go in and, you know, they already showed that they could do resolution boost. They shown that they could do FPS boost. Who's not to say that in the next iteration of whatever Xbox or PlayStation comes out or, you know, a PlayStation ever does anything like this, that we don't get games that were like something like destiny at 4k, 4k, uh, 60 frames per second. Who's not to say when the next system comes out that that doesn't get boosted to 4k 120. 
you know, because there's they shown the epicity to say that we can actually do this without the developers even have to do anything. So I'm looking more at this is just the this is more of the the underlayer to the whole situation. They're like, yo, this is something that's going to be here, not just now, but the games that you're playing right now at 4K 160 you technically could probably be playing those games at 4K 120 when the next system comes out. And I think that is the thing. That's the promise of FPS boost to me. So I'm super excited just to see what this actually turns into later on in the generation towards the next one. I feel like when it comes to the boost thing, I feel like a lot of people like to downplay. And I don't, I've never understood why you want to downplay something like that. Because to me, when it comes to the boost, it's like, look, like, they are insuring and giving people, you know, a lot of reinsurance. Like, look, if you invest into this company, we're always going to have, you're always going to have that game. You're never going to get to a point. Right. And to me, we're consumers. We, we should want that. Like, right. even if you don't play old games at all, you should want the ability to always have your games no matter where you go. And, you know, especially Microsoft's taking it to the next level. They're like, well, we're... We're uh, X Cloud starting to get starting to be popping. We you know we're still improving that. What's that is where they want it to be. Because I personally feel like X Cloud was designed for 5G's, but it works with 4G's. And um, I feel like once 5G's is 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 a, is a regular thing where everyone has it, and you know everyone's clearly been taken over by zombies and stuff. Because all this stuff with 5G's is crazy. People people right. people say it gets cancer, but that's besides the point. Once everyone got access to 5G's, I have a feeling gaming is going to be more portable than it ever has. And then you're finally going to have Nintendo actually have competition in the portable market. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the that's the move right there. You know, um, Nintendo in that portable market is pretty strong, though. And um, I think the only thing that's going to knock them off that square is if everybody decides to just want to play on their phone more. And as of right now, people aren't ready to give up their dedicated hardware for to go as much as people say, you know, they don't have space to carry all this stuff around. People find a way to carry a switch with them. And uh, I think that is the perfect form factor for portability on the go. Um, it's even more portable than a laptop. And a lot of people like to take their gaming laptops and stuff with them. If we can ever get a point where Xbox can get um, Game Pass onto the Switch, like I know they want to, then you're going to see a whole nother level of engagement with that system too. So phones is the future, but I think as of right now, Nintendo has carved himself out a very nice, nice place to live when it comes to portability. So do, do you think, out of curiosity, do you think that if the portable scenario becomes so demanding with the streaming and it grows, do you think that, you know, we'll start playing way more games outside of your crib than you play inside? Like, cause, cause to me, I feel like it, the, the, the natural home environment's always going to be key, but yeah. I do feel like depending on how we go and the direction that the industry is going, there will be times where you're going to be sitting in the doctor's office. You're going to be, you're going to be playing Fortnite, Apex Legends, just chilling, waiting for your, your appointment to have happen. Yeah. Like, and I think it's going to, it's going to feel the same. It does on that phone than it does at home. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see it anytime soon. Like that rash transformation to that, because we're still dealing with our generation where when we get out the house, we ain't trying to do nothing, but you know, BG, when well, he can speak to this, when he gets here too, you know, when you walk out your house, you really ain't trying to play games unless you're, you just sit, like you said, you're sitting at the DMV or you're waiting for your doctor's appointment. Most of the time you're driving, but you know, the, the youth that's coming up now, you know, they're looking at it more as shoot. I, I'm at the, but I'm taking the bus. Um, and you got to think the youth, the people that's like my, youth. my brother's uh, generation or lower, they're the ones playing these games on the go anyway. They're the ones it's playing not us. On the go. So that's where you'll see the transformation happening. You'll see more people like that as you know the people that are like 15 to 20 you know them growing up the ones that are used to carrying their laptop and stuff with them or they used to having to switch on the on the train you know most of the people that are over in age southeast asia and japan and stuff like that that play nothing but portability you know once uh sooner or later that type of gamer is going to creep out over here and be very prominent 
And not saying that console gaming is going to suffer from it because I don't think it's truly going to really suffer for it. But I do think mobile gaming and the direction that Microsoft wants to go with their whole platform being everywhere you can be to play, that's going to be the new barometer when it comes to people playing games on the go. I don't think it's going to be as foreign to people in the next 10 to 15 years. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially us we 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 have a a huge fear in terms of streaming you know we yeah we we and it's because it's not really necessarily our fault we've had some of the worst examples of streaming Uh, and i think up until stadia and you know x cloud to a point like we've never seen a a kind of experience that's like yo maybe this is actually a valid thing that you can do in the future yeah definitely yo we got uh we got a five dollar super chat from Uh, crazy horse shout out to you brother he says, Bungie said, F you, Sony. I'm turning on crossplay, and we're not paying that crossplay fee. Listen, like, man, I, Bungie I, out here tripping right now. They Whoever did what they did today, man, you, you, just met, you just ruined a lot of people's day. Like, today, like, launch day for a Destiny DLC, people take days off work for that. And you know what's sad? And I was going to get to your super chat here in a second. Oh, Forte definitely... Uh, got it before me i appreciate that forte no, but I'm you here, you, for you, you, you know what the crazy part is is like us as destiny fans and i know bg is about to be here he's getting stuff ready in the background shout out to bg for coming in here straight pretty much right after he got off work but uh so he yeah, took his tie off yet yeah so the, the the crazy part is we have been used to this so much that forte's off work and he still didn't try to log in that day <laughs> right when it first came no, out. No, I, I I went out the I went out <laughs> I went out the um, um lunch with my mom, got some hibachi. I was sitting on I was still sitting in the chair at the time the reset happened. I was like, yeah, this ain't gonna be working. So it's, <laughs> it's, no, it's no reason for me to rush home. And I get home and it's the look it, better yet, I logged in, I did the update. And it let me in the tower. But guess what? For the whole last three hours, nobody was able to get into the tower, the helm. So your boy, you know, I learned. I learned my lesson a long time ago about Destiny and Day 1 DLC launches. Yeah, so, okay, let, let's go ahead and uh, get into the show a little bit. You know, one of the things I want to talk and I and I made sure that BG was here because I know he's a huge person on the other aisle than I am, is right now I feel like there's an internal debate low key because of sony like we can't we can't act like that doesn't happen is first person aspect versus third person aspect you know you got your games like fallout you know prop most likely starfield which you know a lot of these games have the option to switch back and forth between them uh you know besides stuff like cyberpunk you know you couldn't switch to third person unless you got on a vehicle and then you got you know stuff like pretty much anything sony makes god of war uh it, it, so i what i want to ask the people in this chat and the people in the chat itself is what is your preference in terms of do you like first person over third person and if you do like one of them over the other why so i'm going to let you guys in the chat go ahead and put that in the chat and forte let's start with you because bg's still doing uh you know st- still getting home still doing bg things so what is your favorite and why uh my favorite oh man it's kind of weird because <clears throat> We all know what Mass Effect plays at. You know, Mass Effect is a third person game. It's pretty amazing. And uh, shout out to the new one. The the Legendary Edition is coming out on Friday. But I still will always fall in that um, first person um, market when it comes to those type of games. But it also definitely comes down to the type of games that we're playing. If we're talking about shooters, like games like um, Far Cry or games like um, Destiny or Call of Duty, Titanfall, stuff like that. I always like the um, intimacy of just seeing the weapon on the on the screen uh, and being able to see just what's in front of me. It's more of that tunnel vision. It's like, I don't need to see everything that's going on around me because all I'm trying to do is focus on what's in my peripheral vision and what's in front of me. And uh, I think once you add the element of a character on the screen, that's when you take away from that type of gameplay. Like Gears of War, I think, does it very, very well. Um, But it's also about the style and, you know, of the characters they want you. And then it's a cover game, too. So when you you got cover involved, 
you always got to shoot. You always got to go third person. I think I get what you're saying from that. But, like, to me, I feel like, is it like me? It's like all third persons play alike. You're, it, there's some that, you know, I, I don't feel like besides stuff like The Witcher 3, they all yeah. have, like, an in-depth in gameplay. It's like you cover, you shoot, then they have the stealth mechanics that's in these third persons. But, like, that's pretty much all. Like, I, I, you know, when you get first person, those are the ones that generally have, like, the massive RPGs. You've had right. first persons that's been platformers, uh, like uh, like the Mirror's Edge. Like, obviously, yeah, like third Edge. third person does a lot. Maybe it's just because I grew up on, on the Fallouts, on the Elder Scrolls, Skyrims, and that's probably why I no- normally gravitate more towards those type of games. Uh, I, I do understand. I will agree BG has a huge saying when it comes to he feels like a third person play tells a story better. And I, I oh, do th- absolutely. I, I do. Does. I do agree to a it point does. on that because I do feel like third persons could tell a story better, but I do kind of feel like first person could do it just as well, depending on who's developing the game. Yeah, like for instance, Titanfall. yeah, type fall. Like for instance, I know a lot of people didn't like cyberpunk, but well, not necessarily didn't like the game. They didn't like all the issues that the game was having. But if you play cyberpunk, I feel like when you're playing it and, and you're getting into like the seats and you're opening, like it's very immersive. Yeah. Like they, they did their best to make the first person as immersive as possible. So I feel like I get it. Some people like the third person. Some people like me, like both of them, but I do prefer to yeah. lean more towards first person. Do you agree that if the, if the viewpoint is wrong, that that should be right there enough to, not to play the game at all. Even try it because you don't like the view person. It's not first person. No, I mean, I think you should definitely try because, I mean, I've always been first person over third person. And I think, like I said, my favorite game of all time is Mass Effect 2. And that game is a third person game. So I would have never experienced that game if I didn't try um uh, to even see what it was like. What's so, up, guys? Y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. BG? Yeah, we hear you. So, yeah. you know, so I think overall, it's, it's it, like I said, it depends on the game. Like, for me, I do think the story aspect is told very, very well. It's easier to do in a third-person game. It's not too, it's not saying you can't do it in a first-person, but I also think in a third-person game, um, especially a game like Cyberpunk, where you you got to show off the way that your character looks and everything, you know, all the augmentations and stuff like that. Which you know, and then they don't let you a, see your character. No, and they don't I, let you it, see your character. That I don't agree with that. That's the thing that I hate about first person when they have all of these unlockables that you're supposed to have on your character, but you never see your character. I think um, Outriders does a really good job of that when it actually works. You get to see the gear that your character has on in it. Um, it's more of a showpiece and it's part of the game. And uh, I think stuff like that, you know, the only game I can really think of first person wise that does a good job of portraying that is probably destiny because of the third person aspect that they give you when you're in like, you know, certain areas of the game and everything where it force you into third. Imagine person and Im- you can see that. Imagine doing a, a third person and uh, a first person aspect with a sword and destiny. <laughs> I did that. You could force it. You can actually force the game to do it. It's a it's a glitch in the game where you yeah. can force it to play third person. It's that, weird as hell. That'd be interesting. So we got a weird as hell. We got a. Fo- I, I, I do think though that it just, just depends on the game, but. I want to hear what BG got to say about it. So, so real quick, we got a five dollars super seven. J Dub is a shell. I love that name. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's just because so funny. Because J Dub's name in it. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, unless it's a horror game, I prefer third person. That uh, there's something about seeing your character, especially when you have customization involved. I agree, yeah. but but to me, I feel like a lot of third person games don't have customization. Name me five. Like visual, like like, like deep deep customization in, in, in third mean, person you, games. You mean they're just like their character aesthetic, or like the actual j- gameplay? J- j- no, the character aesthetic. Oh, uh, that changes how they look. Uh, well, you know, I got bad memory. I know Horizon did it. <laughs> um, there's definitely games that that do it. I mean, if they're like if they have RPG elements, 
Yeah, um, they definitely do it. Then it, I would say most. I think Assassin's Creed does a good job at it, and, and then yeah. and then I'll be seeing third persons do it, but then during the cutscenes, you're like default skin. Like it, that makes no sense. But you know, let let's let's BG. You, I brought you in for this topic because I know you're a very passionate person about this. Uh, when I talk about those the stands that only like third person, you one of the people that come in mind because you you ride and die for this viewpoint. And, and it's not just you. A lot of people love this, and I, I do feel like Sony has a lot to do with that because they've made such wonderful games in that third person aspect. Right now, BG, obviously you like first uh, third person over first person. Explain why that is. I mean, it, it just ultimately it, it gives you more possibility more room for for certain things i mean first person really limits a lot of things it, the first person it, it cuts you off from a lot of things from honestly it, it's really hard to make uh like uh be fully immersed and make a connection with a character when all you see is floating arms like the the performance that for one like the voice actor has to give in order to do that they have to go above and beyond like one of the few like an example of that is, is uh is is booker in Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. I, I feel like we were able to connect with that character, but it's mainly because of, of what's the name's performance. Um, you know, his name is slipping my mind. We know who, who played him. There's only two people in the gaming industry who, who do voice acting nowadays. Um, so <laughs> if, if his performance wasn't there, we would have like real, no, really no connection with, with Booker. Also, I just feel like, it's it like first person has this like ro sometimes this robotic feel to it it's it, and it and it's like it's a lot more entertaining to see your character you know what i'm saying like it feels more real your character feels like Dude. it's actually there more than just more than just floating arms that's all i really feel and and, and see when i play a first person game is just floating arms Okay, so let, let me ask you a question real quick. We got a $5 super chat from Crazy Horse. Third person only, I get several headaches when I try to play a first person game. It's like I said, there's a lot of people, you know, uh, I respect you guys. Is there any first person games that you put that you wouldn't have normally played, but it was in the aspect, but you liked the game uh, so much that, you know, you like the ideal of it. You tried it and you ended up liking it. Like I, for me, like dude, the DX, uh, the do X, what are, what's that game pronounced? Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Like I love that game. And that's one of the reasons that uh, uh, I feel like they take real good uh, advantage of a first person aspect. Is um. It's one of yeah, the few I mean, games that did it well. Yeah, it, it did it well going in and out of it. But like, I feel, I feel like you can take most. Here's the thing: you can take most first person games, right? I believe this, and put them in third person, and it would still work well. You can't do the the reverse. You can't take a lot of third person games and put them in first person; it'll work. It it doesn't because third person just allows you to do more. You know, especially gameplay wise and mechanically. Like things work in third person, but they but they won't necessarily work in first. Now we were talking about something before you came in here, BG. Well, let's talk about the competitive aspect of, of third person, because to me in Forte we've been playing Destiny. We we've played that competitive aspect. Uh, we what what is it called Forte when people use the emotes to peek around corners? Oh, three peeking. Yeah. So so it, do you think you could be more? Do you think as a competitive scene? Do you think it's better to be in the first person genre or the third person genre? I think third person absolutely takes more more skill. The 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 skill ceiling for third person is absolutely higher because in mo in most first person games, right? The main thing you really have to worry about is aim and accuracy. In third person games competitively, they also like movement is a huge part of it. You look at most third person games competitive, movement is huge like gears what like one of the most important things in gears is movement online if you don't have movement you're dead uh, uncharted same thing your movement has to be on 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 point like strafing left to right and all that stuff most first person shooters you don't really have to worry worry about that that's not that's not really a big factor in it so there's a lot more things you just have to worry about if you're playing a third person game competitively i don't know i i have to push you back a little bit that just just a little bit because like I feel like first person is because it, it's it's a lot easier 
to 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 really like you know kind of cheese it a little bit in third person when you're able to to look around that corner and see what's around that corner you're nowhere near the edge of that wall like i i feel like you you like we said corner peeking like right now in destiny bg just so you know what we're referring to destiny's clearly a first person shooter so what people are doing is they're going around like trials of osiris they're they're going around like a sniping corner and instead of peeking their head over there, they're doing an emote that pops into third person and then they peek I've around the it. corner. Mm -hmm. So like to me, scenarios like that, maybe it's okay if it's all first person or all third person. But the fact that you're able to, to hit that third person aspect in destiny is such an issue right now that des that Bungie is going to disable it for competitive uh, v modes. Are they not Forte? If I remember correctly, yeah, they are. Yeah, because that, that's how bad it is. Because it, it's kind of easier if you can look around the corner and see that dude there and he doesn't even know you're there. Obviously, if you're playing a third person, homeboy at the other side should be doing the same thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, to me, I feel like if you can see around the corner, you're not even around the corner, that makes it a lot less more competitive than it is where you have to pop your head around that corner and put yourself in danger to actually get the kill. But in third person, you can look before you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that's a factor. I mean, like, yeah, head, you know, just the whole head glitch, you know, that that exploit can be used in, in you know, even even in third person games, you know, but it's, it's it definitely worse. It's definitely worse in first person because that's not something that you're actually supposed to be doing, um, you know, by the parameters of the game. I've seen what you what you uh, you know, I've seen the, the uh, Destiny videos and of people you, doing that, though. You know how bad it was? I remember because this has been a thing for years. I remember playing the original uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the the multiplayer they used to have. I love that Assassin's Creed multiplayer. They they don't really do it anymore. But I remember like what I would do is you could you could you could um whatever it's called where you're peeking because you're naturally third person. I remember looking around the corner, seeing people act different because in that game, I don't know if did any of you play those. Hell no. Like, the whole point I is... I that was a thing. Yeah, well, Assassin's <laughs> Creed used to have a multiplayer. And the whole point of the multiplayer was to pick I out played. the people that weren't the, the NPCs. So everyone had the same NPC walking around with different NPCs. And what you would do is you would blend in with the NPCs. And, and the, the thing that you would do as the attacker is you would decipher who is an NPC. Mm -hmm. So you, what you do is you like, you know, I, I got to the point where you could tell who it is if people are too close to each other, because that's not how NPCs gather around. Uh, you could corner peek around like a corner where they can't see you and you can see them moving around like BG. I used to be so mean on this game. I used to, to find out who they were when I was the, um, when I was the defender and then I would run, I wouldn't even run very far. I'd run around a corner tilt my camera to where I could see him chasing me. And the moment he came around the camera, I'd punch him out and then keep running. Like, cause he knew it, it, that was an issue back then. So clearly it, it, it could be an issue now. And, and like Forte, I kid you not. He didn't even know it was coming till he went around the corner. Cause I saw him, he couldn't see me. And then all happens is I just, I hit him and I ran every time. I, sometimes I would do it eight times in a row and then they would just stop coming after me in general. So, you know, do, so do you think that uh, any type of first person action adventure games, uh, BG, so you, you honestly don't like, do you not like the competitive scene of first persons? Well, or? I, that's, that's what I wanted to ask him because, you know, <clears throat> I know BG, I've been watching him ever since, you know, the kill zone days, you know, when this man was posting gameplay for kill zone double doubles and stuff all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. um you was a beast back then well you're you still a see the thing you know you're you know, still a beast you know the you, funny you, thing is he, he was really good at that so that's what that's kind of gets me because i know he's also a socom fan too so i know he kind of goes both ways on it so and you treat both of them the same when you were playing a bg you know you're very competitive in both uh but you don't lean either what you still lean towards the third um person way like socom that you did even when you were playing uh kill zone uh yeah i mean kill zone like if 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 I had a choice, like if you gave me like a choice of like, oh, you could make Killzone like a natural third person shooter right now, I'm absolutely still taking the third person shooter. The only probably okay. the only game that I would not change out of first person is Battlefield. Battlefield is perfect how it is. Oh, it's I perfect the way it is. That. I agree. One hundred percent. One hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. So 
it, what, what's funny is B, BG, uh, like the biggest competitive games in the first person market that I've seen, you don't even play. You, Rainbow Six Siege, I'll, I I think you 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 definitely ducked that. Um, you don't want you don't want nothing <laughs> to do. You don't, I didn't duck it. I didn't like the gameplay. <laughs> you don't want nothing to do with the smoke and trials of Osiris. You don't oh, want nothing to do with that. Play, he, he, he said Destiny was garbage the day he played it. <laughs> like, Trials yeah, of Osiris uh, yeah. is some of the most sweaty competitive multiplayer I've ever played in my whole life. I watched BG play when he used to post Destiny gameplay, like, eons ago. I was like, he's actually pretty beta. decent. Like, he's actually pretty decent. Like, he was like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> like, BG, how, how how that is, is it's it's 3v3, and when you kill each other, you can, your teammates can revive you. But every time you die, your, your duration of how long you have to wait to get revived goes up. And, and plus, like, it, it gets to the point... Where people, like, because now in Destiny, at the top, they show you who has supers and who doesn't have supers. So, like, it, it's a little bit better than the, the reason. Because I know you don't like it because of the, the supers. You don't like people that you want to yeah, shoot you with I, golden guns. I, I, yeah, I don't believe I don't believe in games that, like, Destiny, when I played, I don't know what's changed now. Are there still supers where you could essentially kill somebody in one hit? Yes. Yeah, you, yes. you, you don't that's like garbage. that one. <laughs> He yeah, doesn't like the one. That's he garbage. doesn't like the. He doesn't like. He never did like. He he said to, that a while ago. I never me, liked the one kill. The the hit advantage only thing. the only way you should be able to one hit somebody in a video game is a sniper shot to the head. That's it. If you can just pull out some magical power and pow you're dead game's garbage i'm, I'm not doing See, the thing, like, especially they, if everybody can do it they've gotten a lot better and stuff like that like they have like sound cues that's like really loud like now well they had it in the first one but now it's really loud in destiny like you'll be sitting there you'll hear golden guns look and no one even uses golden gun anymore that's the funny thing but you'll hear it yesterday you, you, you'll, you'll hear go to gun and then everyone it's like it's straight panic mode bg golden gun go to gun run 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 <laughs> like Man, I, I get it. You don't like that stuff. I, I, you know, I don't want to doom in here too long. I don't want to keep you too long, BG, because I know you got uh, your, your stream to do. It, so when it comes to it, I think we can all agree choice is best. Give us the choice that plays both. Uh, you know, just like GTA did. They, they, it was third person, and they switched to first person. Uh, one of the the mods, get that dude up out of here. Straight ban him. I don't care. He, he, he going to put some stuff like that. Straight ban him. Uh, we got a two dollar super chat from Everborn. What's good, gentlemen? Um, M H G A. I don't know what that is. Uh, make Kayla great again. Do you know what M H G A is? Uh, no. Just make... put that. Just put that in the. Uh... Oh, he's. Oh, he said make Halo great again. That's what. That's what it is. Oh, make Halo great again. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you know, if you want BG, we could talk about that real quick before you leave Halo, because I know you're a big fan of Halo. Yeah. I, I... Oh, right. Uh, I can stay until six, so. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. I, I can stay until six. Did you, uh, BG, we played Halo 5 for did hours. You for, did you just forsaken Halo just like that, BG? <laughs> I, I like Halo's multiplayer. Uh, I do. That's that's another, that's another, well, that's actually, the, another that's game. The, that's the part to me. That Well, that's another game I actually wouldn't change the, the camera angle. The only thing with Halo's camera is the FOV. I've always thought the FOV was terrible, but that's, but the camera angle's fine for Halo. Oh, yeah, 105 at least. So, all right, let's set this up, man, because this is – I feel like we're all passionate about this, even even BG. BG can try to cap all he wants. He, he, how many hours you got in Halo 5, BG? I can look that up. Oh, I have no idea. You can check. Yeah, um, so, I mean, but... we, we're all passionate about this. Yeah, I what... just don't care about Halo's story like that. The multiplayer I care about. I just don't really care about the story. So, what I want to ask you guys is, obviously, last year, there was a lot of mixed reception – to going how the game looked. I don't did anyone have an issue with how the game played, how it looked like it played, or was it all just graphics? Because to me, I at the at the time I didn't even notice how the game looked. I was just looking how it was playing. Listen, I, I saw the game and I was like, oh man, Halo. I mean the gameplay was fine. It was I mean they, they could have kept the whole grappling hook thing. That kind of looked weird, but you know, if they iterate on it and make it better, okay, it's another tool that they add to the game. But man, once you start seeing it, <laughs> The, the biggest thing with that that was is the fact that they were talking about most powerful system mm -hmm. and then your number one top of the cream game that Xbox was built on has pop in and textures not there and 
lighting was completely missing and you know come to find out you know we we find out more and more information all the time um especially over the last week that you know they're developing the engine at the same time as the game and they went back and changed a lot of the stuff that was happening in the game so there's just a lot of stuff that's been going on with the game in general but the gameplay i always thought was you know fire because game that's the one thing that halo has in spades but it just wasn't a good look for what everybody was expecting from the most powerful console. If you're going to use the moniker that our system is, you know, the bee's knees when it comes to all that, then you got to showcase that. And I think, you know, everybody, a lot of people, even people that were even probably quietly hating that Halo, the Halo probably wasn't going to be as good. I think even they were surprised that, it showed the way that it showed. So yeah. that's where most of it came from. Yeah, so let, let me get the super chat. Look, look, your Mass Effect's foolishness forte has showed up on here now. Like, I can't I cannot wait till this Mass Effect thing's over and this this ex, the, this legendary comes and goes and I never have to hear this again. Hey. Like, BG, let me tell you about the past couple weeks for me. Great, I'll great be in I, I'll be in a party with these people and all they talk about is Mass Effect. And then when they're not talking about Mass Effect, they're arguing about Mass Effect. I would be so glad when this is over. You five dollars super you, you should have played the game just like we did and yeah. you would understand y'all talking, talking to the wrong person about mass effect i think mass effect is garbage oh, oh <laughs> so we got a five dollar super chat from jd is a shell uh, from jw is a shell is it okay to wear my uh, my bag hat in here i'm assuming he's talking about uh uh i don't know make make halo great again isn't that the same we're not gonna we're gonna move past that uh make at it great again oh, come on man you guys have been <laughs> clowning me Attic for great. weeks yeah. to be clear mass effect 2 is the goat for me oh my god man look oh, man. like i will well, I, I, I will I, well, probably we, we could we could move on from this because i know you don't want yeah, to i will it out i do have to ask bg though what was it the first one that turned you off and you just never the second you just never went to go play the second one because you just couldn't get don't answer person. that because he's going to turn this into a no, slander no, I, 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 <laughs> it's an interesting question because that's how i just that's why i really just want really want to know what it was is that yeah, what it uh, was the first one I, just didn't get you yeah i played the first one i thought it was terrible then i just looked at the second one and i'm like i don't think this looks any better now so he's going to tell you no no, 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 no let, let, let me let me let me be for taver bg yeah, man Th ahead. that's just how that's just how mass effect one is no i ain't gonna like, say that like bg that. if you really want to give the mass effect trilogy mm, a, a start just start with two guess what bg they mm. don't even care if you didn't play number one you can nah, play two and they'll let you start that. your own character and you can go straight from two to three yeah, what yeah, were you going to say that. then forte what were you we going to say that. i was going to say you know what? He absolutely right. Because the <laughs> first one was trash when it came down. It took the se see. You see the biggest difference between me and BG. BG said he didn't even look at the second one. I actually looked at the second one and played the first mission. It was like, yo, I got to carry my character forward. So I'm about to go struggle bus through this first game, so I can make all my character progression go through. And that's the difference between me and BG. I actually went, I actually saw the game and went and played it where BG was like, hell no, I'm not doing this. And that's pretty much what I did. And, and I think you played all the Assassin's Creed, right, BG? Haven't you? Uh, pretty much? No, no. I <laughs> I played Assassin's Creed 2, the the two after that. And then pretty, uh, I, I played up to four and then skipped all of them after that, pretty much. Oh, okay, so you played basically through the Desmond series and then yeah. that was it. Yeah, yeah. see, I'm the complete. So his story about Mass Effect is my exact story for Assassin's Creed. I refuse to play an Assassin's Creed game because I never played the first. I played the first one and hated it. I it was sucked. like, what is this game? And I never looked at the second one. I never looked at the third one. And I was like, and people keep saying, well, it's a lot better now. And I'm like, uh, okay. All right, I, so, I just never wanted to play it because right, the first one was so bad to me. I just, so I kind of get where VG comes from when he I says I just got that. one thing to point out, Forte. Mass Effect is not a title. We're moving on back to Halo. All right, yes, so sir. so BG since it we're takes go place in space though. Oh my god! Since we're only gonna have you for like another fifteen minutes, 
what would they need to do in terms of multiplayer? Because I know you're not really a big fan of the single player. You could briefly talk about the single player and why you, you don't really like the, the single player much anymore. But what do they need to do in terms of multiplayer to win you back over to play that regularly? Like you play something like, um, what's that? Bad, not bad company. Um, Rogue Ro company. Rogue Ro Ro company. Ro company. Oh, you talking about Halo? Yes, Halo. Uh, the multiplayer. Uh... I, I mean, I really like the multiplayer of five, so they don't really have to do too much. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm okay with the the typical Halo, you know, multiplayer formula. I I I think I want the maps to be a little bit bigger. I hated the super like tight, you know, super close corridor maps. I, you know, I like them in some ways, but like they were the the maps were super simplistic and corridor, and you know, I hated the FOV that you know a dude could literally be. Um, on your like like touching you on your left and you can't even see him because the fov is is so bad so yeah that yeah. they don't really have to do much i think the halo multiplayer formula is kind of you know fine how it is and see i i, I know there's halo purists where you know they argue whether oh should running be in it should, should it not be, be in a game all, all that stuff i don't care i don't care if it's in or not i can play either way whether y'all add all right. that extra stuff or what, not. i don't care what have you considered the core to halo multiplayer uh, two or three? No, like the core of oh. their multiplayer, like how it oh. features, how it functions. Uh, I would I would say it's it's really just about like the the direct gunplay. Yes, um, that's that's really what it's about. It's it, it's a it's about BRs, um, you know, the pistols and you know, grenade placement. It's about the simple things, honestly. Yeah, like, Halo I is think, like really simple. I it's think just go ahead. Uh, I think what's always made Halo Halo is the map control. The fact that you, uh, I, I like what they did in Halo Five, where they started announcing where the where the guns are, and they started announcing when stuff was coming up. They're like, you got 15 seconds to a sniper or something like that. Because to me, that's what's always been Halo. It's been the fact that if we don't get that shotgun, they might use that shotgun to win. The fact that mm -hmm. everyone spawns the same things. The fact that you don't have any loadouts. And I think that's why people didn't like Halo 4's multiplayer as much. Is because they kind of went away from that. But in Halo 5, they brought it back. If you want the rocket launcher, guess what, bud? You got to go get the rocket launcher. And a lot mm -hmm. of the time, it means fighting for the rocket launcher. Yeah. Part of me feels like Halo kind of lost a little bit of its charm when they started doing that, though. When it came to announcing things. There was a... There was a a secret skill to Halo 1 and Halo 2 and Halo 3 when you just you had a person on your team where everybody on your team knew the timers of everything when they spawned. It's like I kind of missed that. And you're right, they did jump the gun a lot in Halo 4 because they went that whole kill streak avenue and um that's when they really started announcing like orbital drops and stuff on maps and stuff they tried to chase call of duty when it came to that so that's why i think that multiplayer kind of fell on his face but i kind of missed the, I, i'm not going to say they should get rid of it but i do miss the fact that yo when did we pick up sniper we picked up sniper you know once the sniper ran out we picked it up you know two minutes ago and we know it's on the eight on it's on a three minute timer i and you know and, and teams that were good knew that stuff and you and when you played against other but, teams that knew all that stuff it just took halo to a whole nother level feel, so they they hold your hand a little bit too much i think in in halo nowadays but like bg said i do think halo guardians um their multiplayer was vastly superior when it came to just the gameplay and the movement because that's the biggest thing that halo is is it's all about movement it's about positioning about banking that grenade off that one corner and knowing that there's yeah, more than likely somebody Halo, going to be over there. Halo's one of the few games still left that a grenade is actually effective. Oh, like, yeah, you, yeah. You, you you use your grenades to actually do stuff in Halo. And, and uh, part of me, I hope they don't go too far away from what Halo 5 was. I hope they keep it to the core. How do you guys feel about the grappling hook? I saw some people in the chat bring up the grappling hook. Apparently, you know, 
I don't think you can latch on to people, but you can actually like bring like coils and stuff to you to throw it. You can bring weapons to you. I think that's going to change a lot because when someone's about to grab that rocket launcher and they're right there, you just use the grappling hook and yank it to yeah. you. I think that's going to be effective. Do you, you think that's pretty close for that though? Do you think that's going to break the immersion BG uh, of like grappling hook? Uh, I think as as long as like the animation looks right and they find the right, right. way to implement it into multiplayer, I think it, it could be fine. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it would be if you could just grab people with the grappling hook. I thought it was no. Maybe you, they you should can't grab people. I don't think. Oh, it's just people. for traversal then. Yeah, I think okay. you can, you. I think you can grab AI like enemies on the uh, like in the story, but I don't think yeah. you can grab people in it. Okay, in there, but but they. I, I'm pretty sure that they actually came out and confirmed that. Someone in the chat, uh, double double check that. So, you know, I honestly think when it comes to you know we we saw the bad thing that happened with them last year and you know they had to delay the game a whole year do you think that it's realistic that a year is enough time to see serious results or do you think we're still going to see uh a halo that we're going to be disappointed with in, in, in next month like we'll start with bg i think you're going to see an optimized a, a very optimized version uh of what we probably already seen um they're not i don't you know no i don't think they're going to be able to change the game drastically because uh i mean i think they're crunching anyway i think they're going to crunch for this entire year right um yep. i don't think they have any choice in that if they really want this game to turn out how they're envisioning it because you know it's you know they they got they're they're being very ambitious about it so i don't think it's going to be a drastically different game i think it's just going to be the best version of what they are already shown all right so let me ask you this do you think, uh, first off, let's go to Forte real quick. Uh, same question. Do you think that, you know, we're going to expect a, a way better product in terms of visualization on that screen this June? That game's coming out in 2021 now, right? Yes. No. I don't think either. I, I think. No. I think it's going to be just like BG said. I think it's going. I think that game, like, I, and, and I said this. On, I think because I was on the um, I was on the show with you guys when we saw it for the first time, and then I was on there with you guys when we when they delayed it, and I said it then. I was like, unless they're delaying this game out of 2021, you're not getting a vastly different game. Now, would it? Will you probably get better feature sets? Will you get a more polished version of the game? Will that take care of the pop-ins and stuff like that? Does it give them another year to go in and brush up on some of the texture qualities and do some 4K texture mappings inside the game that probably wasn't there before? Absolutely. But when it comes to the overall fidelity of that game, that game, no, that game was sealed the moment that we saw it. All we're going to do is get a nice little shiny coat of paint put over the top of it with some lighting because the lighting looked terrible because guess what? There was none. So we'll get stuff like that. But overall, I think what they said in that um, that article as of recently is the fact that don't be blown away. Well, as soon as they said it was actually coming out of 2021, I was like, well, I'm just hoping to have a good game at this point. I'm not really looking for Halo to do something that Halo hasn't done in over a decade. All right, so here, here's my last question with the Halo, and then we're going to let BG go. Let's say Halo comes out. I'm going to give you two scenarios. Tell me what your opinion of the outcome is for both. Halo comes out. It's a great game. No, Halo comes out, and it's an average game. Or Halo comes out, and it's straight up, straight up flop, like 60 Metacritic, which I don't think. I think the 60 Metacritic, Halo going to come out and get an 80 plus just for being Halo. That's just my opinion. Like, I don't think Halo is going to get scrutinized too much unless it's like a huge drastic change from Halo, from that core Halo thing. Do you think that Xbox will be permanently damaged for the rest of the generation if X, if, if Halo comes out and flops? What do you think, Forte? Um... If it comes out, well, okay, we won't even talk about this whole 80, I mean, this whole 60 scenario. Um, if Halo comes out and does what I think it should do, and it captivates, especially on the multiplayer side, because that's the part I care about the most, even though I do love the story, I just don't know really what to expect from 343 when it comes to story. I just want to be surprised when it comes to that. And if it's good, it's good. But the multiplayer is the thing that's going to keep me there. And 
If they can knock that out the park, I will tell you right now, I will more than likely quit playing Destiny. All right, so what about you, BG? Do you think that if Halo comes out there and it flops, and and I, I mean flop where, you know, it, it, it comes out buggy mess, no one's playing it, you know, it, it goes around the same kind of, I wouldn't say as bad as Star, not Starfield, as bad as Cyberpunk, but if this comes out and it's not, like an above average game. Cause I honestly feel like people get this mixed up. If Halo comes out and it's an average game and people like it, that's not a flop. It's just not what Microsoft needed. I don't think that turns the, the needle anywhere, but if it comes out and it's a flop, I do think that's going to hurt them a little bit, but I personally don't feel like that's going to cripple them. What do you think BG? And BG's gone. So, uh, you would go get oh, my bad. My mic, my mic was muted. I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if it comes out and, um, if let's say it's an average game, right? Let's say like, you know, 80, you know, somewhere in the low 80s, mid 80s, and you know, you play the game and it's and it feels like that type of game, right? I think then that that then then that's when Halo has to just be accepted as just another decent or good game. It, it's no longer what Halo 2 and 3 was, you know, this uh, this amazing flagship title. It's just another good, you know, IP under the Xbox umbrella. It doesn't have, you know, it's it, it's not the, the cream of the crop anymore as far as Microsoft IPs go, which is, you know, it, it, that's kind of fine, you know. You know, every you can't stay on top forever. Like it's not, it's not possible. <laughs> and not Unless to mention you're... with games like Fortnite and Warzone, that, and that, completely yeah. destroying that whole shooter yeah. market. It's hard to compete in that market. Yeah, you, you can't remain the best IP forever. I mean, kind of mm. the only the only ones that are able to do it is like Nintendo with Mario. Like it doesn't matter how old Mario get, it still seems to people still still seem to buy it, and it still gets you know the same score. It doesn't matter, right? But others, you know, you, that it's not the same case, right? If it, let's say it now, if it flops, like it's like let's say it gets even in the '70s or anything like that, and Ooh. people are not even playing it, you know, past a month because I don't, they hate the multiplayer, the, the story sucked, and everything like that. Then, then that that is going to be a huge stain on on Halo and and Xbox, and especially since like. This is supposed to be your first, you know, uh, you, your first first party game to to drop, I guess, on the on the series on on the on the new console, right? That's going to be really bad. And I think if there is the next Halo, which is way far in the future after Infinite, you have to do a drastic change of what Halo is, right? Gameplay wise, you have to drastically change it, and you might have to like just make an, another day they, they have a whole bunch of other studios now something else has to become synonymous with the xbox brand at that point like you just use something else now it can't be master chief and halo no more yeah i got plenty of other games plenty of the studios make make something else put something and, else in the spotlight and, and i think that if halo comes out and it's a disappointment I think if it's an average they're just going to keep it moving there's going to be another halo coming out but i think if it's a disappointment I think 343 is going to get drastic. I mean, it's already going to get restructured. We've already seen it. But I think that there's going to be drastic restructures. I think they're going to do uh, whatever they can to keep the install base there. But I don't think any scenario hurts Microsoft to the point where it's like a long-term effect. Because And the reason I say that is because gamers are fickle. You know, when Obsidian drops the new heat, and Bethesda, let's say Starfield comes out and it's good, which, you know, I know a lot of people here are very skeptical with Bethesda, but the core studio of Bethesda has always made good games. Game of the Year contenders almost every time. Fallout 76 was made by another studio. It wasn't made by the core studio of Bethesda. I feel like with the amount of studios that they have, and, and people be acting like these studios made, like, really bad games. No, they didn't. Like, they bought them for a reason. Now, there are some of them that's that, that need to prove themselves, like Compulsion, Undead Labs. But for the most part, the studios that Microsoft owns have made nothing but 80, 85, and 90-plus games. And I feel like when they start getting that machine going, sure, people are going to be like, man, I wish Halo had been better. But they're not going to. They're not going to just not buy the next Elder Scrolls. They're not going to just not buy Starfield. They're not going to just not buy whatever surpasses Doom, whatever the next Wolfenstein. Like 
it's like it's like we've always said for years. You make good games, gamers are coming. It doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, as long as they get that done, I feel like regardless how Halo comes out in June, in November, it's not going to matter. Uh, but obviously, if if it comes out really bad in November, it's going to hurt the Halo brand, just not necessarily like destroy the Xbox brand, if that makes sense to you. Because I feel like the reason that they bought these studios is because they're tired of relying on nothing but Halo, Gears, and Forza. And they want to pass the torch step. They know and, that their fans are tired of that too. And, and to me, I personally feel like Microsoft knows that Halo can't do it anymore, and they're using, hey, uh, they're using what's it called? Um, they they're using stuff like Elder Scrolls. They're using those games to take the torch. Yeah. So that, that that's my thing. But BG, you can go ahead and get up out of here. I know you uh you about to stream, man. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Here. Stream, which one to stream, BG? Yeah, you're you, muted again, you're BG. Muted again. <laughs> yeah, my bad. What you said? So what are you about to stream? Oh, uh, I'm doing Resident Evil uh, Eight Village of Shadows difficulty. I already beat it, but I'm beating it again. Oh, that's what's are that. you? So I know you said in your um your your impression video if you were going to go after the platinum. Um, and Returnal, are you, are you, have you thought about that yet? Has that, have you made a decision yet? No, I think I'm letting that one go, at least for now. Um, yeah, like, I don't mind going after Platinums that, that are difficulty based, but when it's all chance based, I'm like, uh, I don't, you know, and I, cause I already beat the game three times. Yeah. And I don't want to like keep be beating it, hoping to like get the chance to run into the right Xeno glyphs and all that. So I'm put, I'm letting that one go for right now. What was your fastest run so far? Oh man, probably like probably like eight hours, eight nine hours, I think. Okay, I think so, yeah. That's what's up, man. Congratulations on that too, because yeah. most people can't beat it one time without a man, problem. <laughs> man, he said it sounds like y'all hating on Halo. It should be uh, it should be good, especially with how hot xbox is doing now compared to last gen it doesn't matter how xbox well, the company's xbox doing it matters and halo ain't it, got it, nothing to do it, with it, each other. it matters how 343 is handling the brand exactly and, and, and as much as i do have faith that 343 can get where they need to be they haven't shown me that they've done it yet and i hope in june they show me that they've done it but you know let's get bg definitely uh you know go 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 follow bg man where they can find you at i'm sure everyone here knows you but uh, just Broken Games, HDR, Twitter, and YouTube. And, and I really enjoyed that Jason uh, Schreier interview. That was a good interview. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. I wonder if I type in Brooklyn Skill Tree, would it still take <laughs> me to your channel? Uh, I don't know. actually don't know. I wonder if I do that. You know. Shout out to um, BG because, you know, when people out here trying to think of podcasts, they literally probably got to go to BG to figure out if he already used it because the man had so many podcasts with so many good names. He don't didn't, even use didn't it you, anymore. Did, didn't you have a podcast with nothing but <laughs> he hosts? He had Brooklyn Skill Tree. Yeah, he had the Field of View podcast. <laughs> he, People he, had to remind me of that one with the with the, with all the hosts. I didn't even remember that. Though. I was like, I did that. Yeah, I remember yeah, you, you, you had a podcast in, that had nothing yeah. but hosts of other podcasts on it. Yeah. yeah. I was sitting there then, like, then, then, then you had that father and son thing with Kofi. Yeah, the father and son. That was actually fun, man. I wish you would bring that back. That was actually that was fun. um that was classic BG right there, man. Yeah. yeah, I definitely don't got time for all that. <laughs> no, oh, you 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 got a, you got a real life job and and married. Mm -hmm. so all right, I but I appreciate is, you bro. coming by, uh, uh, BG. We're gonna finish this last topic. Uh, I hope your stream goes good. Yeah. Uh, all right, I had a guy. I right, Forte. I'll catch you. All right, all right see have a good night, bro. Forte. Sunset Overdrive 2 looks like it's going to happen. Well, I don't know if it's going to happen, but there's a good chance it's going to happen, and it's going to be on the PlayStation oh, platform. How bad does this look, Forte? <laughs> it's going to happen because PlayStation's like, we got to find a way to take our pile of flesh from Xbox, and they're going to take it this way. It's um, They know that their fans wanted to have a sequel to this, uh, we know that um, Exomiet wanted to make a sequel to this game, but Xbox didn't want to greenlit this game for it to be made. So 
Uh, I think at this point, Asamiak has shown that they are willing to do whatever it takes to get games out when it comes to the type of games that they make. They're, they're willing to push the envelope. They're willing to go above and beyond. To I mean, if you think about last generation alone and this generation, they have the most games released outside of uh, like Call of Duty and stuff. They release more games than almost anybody. But dude- So I think, I think... I think Sony's going to give them the opportunity to make this game. Do you think it's going to be? I truly believe they are. Do you think it's going to be anytime soon? Um, what are that Ratchet and Clank is probably finishing up. Um, keep hearing about, oh man, anytime soon. It, maybe they want to go back into, I think they're done with Spider-Man for a while. So I don't think they're going to go back to that for a minute. I think, I, think, I think they're probably the. the I think the that's core, going to be a couple of years at least. I think the I don't core know if of their studio. Next game. I, th- I think that their next game is going to be Spider Man too. You think? You think so? Mm-hmm. I think their it core might be. It, it could be. It Spider-Man. could be. Or they um, could. They could. They throw a wrench and they do Sunset Overdrive too. Like they could. Like imagine how bad that's going to look when like an exclusive that used to be out for Xbox is now the sequel is only exclusive for PlayStation Five. Uh, do you think? I think they do it just what for the about, memes. What about if they finally go back and do the Resistance games again? I think that's being outsourced. I don't think they're doing that. Yeah, that's true. It's true. I mean, pro- yeah, that's true. It's probably they'll probably have somebody like Blue Point do something like that. When yeah, it comes, to I think that they they would fund at Sunset just for memes. Like I, I would, if I was, listen, man, if I was Sony. And I knew I had an IP that a lot of people on the other side wanted. I would do it, especially, especially it could it fits their character. It fits the PlayStation brand. It fits that kind of wacky type gameplay that um, people expect to have. You know, not doesn't take itself too serious, but it's really fun and really addicting. Um, I think people would really enjoy that. And it wasn't. It's not to say that Xbox people didn't enjoy it. I just think. That game was way too soon for the type of console that Xbox was promoting at the time. You know, back then it was the looter shooter box still. You know, Titanfall was all of the rage. You know, Call of Duty was still exclu- not exclusive, but we still had the DLC uh, one month early access on Xbox back then. Halo was still king of the kings and stuff for the most part when it came. To- they still could fight it out with Call of Duty. So I think Sunset was like a, an experiment that now if Xbox were to release something like that would ter- would go over really well because I think they diverse their player base a lot since 2013, 2014. But when that game first came out, it just kind of fell on deaf ears and is a lot of people played it, but not enough people played it. And um, Xbox was in a completely different headspace with leadership back then. They really wasn't supporting... Um, the continuation of games compared to like they're looking like they're trying to do now. Yeah, I think when it comes to this game, I think Sony knows that it is a love game and it's something that they would support themselves anyway. I don't, you know, people in the chat are saying they think they're making resistance. I don't think that. Uh, if you remember, resistance Son- is a strong one, man. You remember Sony said that their multiplayer games chances are going to go to uh, uh, to PC too. So I don't think they're going to let their first party work on a title that's going to PC. I right. think they, I think they rather outsource that and, and probably take a couple key developers from uh, over uh, from from uh, the um, from Insomniac and have them work on it with that team, then have the entire team of of uh, of Insomniac make it. Because like, look, we get it. People like Resistance, but you know what sells better? Ratchet and Clank. I bet you Ratchet Clank sells better than uh, Resistance. You know what sells better? Spider Man. I'm. I don't even know. Maybe Sunset wouldn't sell as much as as Resistance. I don't know. I, I it's on PlayStation, so I think we can't really take the sales of Xbox into the consideration. Right. But I feel like it, it, it makes more business choice financially for them to focus on on another Ratchet and Clank or make Spider Man two than for them to or work Venom. on Resistance. Venom, yeah, that that could be a thing, but make a venom. I mean, you know, you're instead of I mean, if you want to put a little bit more uh, time into the Spider Man, like make people miss Spider Man a little bit more, you know, make that Venom movie, make a I mean, not movie, but game. 
you so, know, something like that. I think it's time we can make anything they they truly want. I think that's the the you know that one thing that I will always give Slow Mo credit for when he made that video where he talked about you know it's not Naughty Dog might be the most accomplished team, but he thinks. Um, Exami is their most talented team because they're very diverse in the way that they go about making these games. And and they're not a one trick pony. They can, they can make different games and different genres for different people. And, and, and that's what Sony, I think that's the value that Sony has with them. And I think sunset overdrive would just be another notch in that cap for them. If they actually did bring out a part two and, and on top of that, they just make a lot of Xbox people mad too. Let's be for real. And the reason I feel like that too is because, like, look at all the studios that's moved on. You know, yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure Sucker Punch said they're working on another ghost. So like, it's not like they went back to Infamous. Um, yeah. Naughty Dog's definitely not going back to Jack and Dexter. They even they even said that they're done with uh, with uh, Uncharted, pretty much. Clearly, there's someone else probably making Uncharted, but it's but Naughty Dog's not making Uncharted. <laughs> but would it be even the same uh, though? But but my point is to that is all these studios have moved on to other projects. None of them has ever went back to older projects. So why yeah. do we automatically think that Sony are going to do it? Yeah, that's true. Like, that's it true. seems like Sony's, Sony's thing when it comes to these kind of situations is we're outsourcing or building another studio to make that game. We're not having what some of our top tier talent make this game. That's true. No, you're right. But, you know... That's pretty much the show, man. I appreciate everyone coming by. We had a strong of like 130 in here. Uh, you know, uh, I'll be doing it again next week, hopefully. Uh, you know, we'll... we'll, we'll... So, the dude's been kind of dry, Forte, man. It's been kind of dry. I can't tell, man. You've been putting out videos every other day. It's it's been dry, man. Like you've been you've been you've been digging on a bear. It's not that I'm digging in anything. It's just like everything kind of to a point intrigues me. Yeah. So it's easy for me to make videos on something. Just have a conversation about it, yeah. Yeah, so it's not nothing for me to find something to talk about. Uh, it's it How I want to structure it takes longer than anything. But, uh, yeah. you know, I definitely appreciate everyone coming through here, man. Uh, definitely, uh, Forte, where can they find you? What, what's going on with that DPS? What, where... Yeah, man. Um, well, first of all, um, appreciate the invite to come over here, you know, be a part of Addict's World, Addict's Show on the Iron Lords Network and Podcast channel. You know, uh, make sure you just make sure, you, well, you probably already sub to these guys because you're already here, but uh, appreciate you, Addict, as always. But um, it's Gaming Forte everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, Xbox Live, and PlayStation. Uh, check us out on DPS Podcast this Thursday at 9 p.m. You know what? Are... Go ahead. Go Give ahead. me one second. You know, we, <laughs> we won't end it with that real quick. I want to oh, talk okay. about this oh. real quick. Oh, okay. What you oh, hold talk up. about? They, I'm going to send you this link. Go okay. ahead and pop this in your... I, I forgot all about this, man. I was going to talk about it. Now, I, I just want your ideal on if you think any of this is true. Like, any of this. Let me find you... Okay, I'm sending it to your Twitter. Uh, sorry about that, you guys. But I gotta, I gotta see if Forte see feels this like this is. is true, man. Because oh, Lord. Th this is a pretty <laughs> oh, crazy Lord. list. Like we gotta talk about. It. I forgot. Oh, you know what's funny? I went over about to end the show after you give gave your shout outs and then i saw this because it was there and i'm just curious i, I first off i want to make sure can everyone see this list is it on the screen it should be it definitely should be yes it is on the screen so let's talk about this list real quick or do you are you on it i'm on the list all right so we have 2021 Obviously, this is an easy thing to say because it's this year. Got Age of Empire 4, Deathloop, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Psychonauts, Forza Horizon 5, Starfield, Halo Infinite. Tell me which one of those you think is real and which one you think is fake. Because I'm telling you right now, some of this list, there's some real stuff and there's some fake stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Are we talking about for 2021? Yes, let's start with 2021. Ooh, um, I don't think. Wow. Well, they say Deathloop PS5, so we know that's coming. Are they gonna? Are they actually gonna? Sh is this what they're gonna show? I think this is what's coming out. Oh, this is okay. This is what's just coming out. Okay. 
Um, did they actually put a date on Psychonauts? I believe it is supposed to come out this year. Yeah, so. that's what I thought. Yeah, this I don't is think a safe Forza Horizon. This I don't, is a I don't, safe bet. So between Forza and Horizon, I don't. One of those games ain't coming this year. Yeah. So not for not Forza and Horizon. Um, Starfield and Horizon. One of those ain't coming. One of those Starfield. Ain't I think I don't think Starfield's making it this year. I I I just think that. If we don't hear about it in the next month, that game's not coming this year. You want my opinion on 2021? 2021? Age of Empire I definitely think, ain't coming. You know, Age of Empire's got a release I, date It's this out year. now. It's out on PC. Do you think Flight Sim's going to really come over? I, I think I think these are really like what the, the studio itself's doing. I don't think it's necessarily about Xbox. <laughs> but, okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. So... I think this whole 2021's happening. I honestly do. Besides Age of Empire, I don't think that's coming to Xbox. But as far as Xbox, I think this whole list is coming out this year. Well, yeah, Deathloop's coming. I just don't... Yeah, Age of Empire, I don't think it's coming to the Xbox. Flight Sim, we already know it's coming. Psychonauts got announced. Like I said, it's down to Horizon and Starfield. And I probably have more faith in Horizon making this year. Can I really truly think that they want to have a next gen racer release uh, within a year of the system? And Starfield could probably get possibly pushed into like spring of next year. But I, I, I still think Starfield from all of the from all of the stuff that's been talked about, and every time Phil Spencer opens his mouth and talks about Bethesda, he always talks about Starfield. So. I think Forza is a given. Starfield's the wild card, but I I just I stand by the fact that they talk about it too much not to come out this year. I think from from what from what I've heard through the grapevine, I, I think Starfield. Hey, uh, gotta play that music, man. When you say through the grapevine, <laughs> Starfield, her, uh, Forza Horizon Five, Halo Infinite, and Flight Simulator and Psychonauts all definitely come out this year, no doubt in my mind. So. You know, we've we've went over 2021. That was the easy one. That's the rest of one. this list is crazy. Okay, let's do 2022. What here's fake? Find Waldo. What's fake? What's fake? Um, I don't. Oh, we. Um, I don't think Wolfenstein Three is coming next year. Project Mara. I don't think it's coming next year either because I think Hellblade has a better chance of coming next year. Because it's made by the same freaking people, and their team ain't that big. Um, Arcane's unannounced game could come next year, but if it does, it's going to get announced this year. Avowed, oh man, that's a that's a tough one right there. I just see that being twenty twenty three. Okay, here's my opinion. I, okay, so if I had to say, if I if if someone put a gun to my head and said Forte pick, we know Ghostwire. I believe Hellblade 2 will. I think Ghostwire could come out on Xbox next year. I think Ghostwire could come out at the beginning yeah. of next year, and towards the end, it's put on Game Pass. It comes out on yeah, Xbox. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ghostwire is going to come next. I mean, well, this is just showing the PS5 release, PS5 first. So Ghostwire is coming. I think Hellblade will be next year. Uh, Arcane's game will get announced. I think that will come out next year. Avowed, I still think is in the. I think when we saw was the concept phase of it, and I think that game's going to be like a mid two thousand twenty three game. So here, here's my Wolfenstein take. three. That's a that's a that's a. I, I I don't know about that one either. Here's my take. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Avowed's twenty twenty three. Go uh, Ghostwire. Go twenty twenty three. Uh, okay. Ghostwire. That's probably coming out next year. I think Hellblade yes. two is twenty twenty three. Oh, okay. uh, I think Wolfenstein 3 is a 2022 game. Um, it's easier to make. Yes, and they have been working on it for a while. It's been confirmed. I don't know what Arcane's working on. Hopefully it's Dishonored 3. That would be that would be lit. And I know that that team's been working for a while. So that definitely might come out next year. Project Mario, that game don't exist to me until I see more on it. So, so That's what I'm trying to say. So you, so you don't think um, Ninja Theory is going to release a game at all next year? Do you? No, I don't. 
Okay, because that, cause that's the way I'm operating on. If they're going to release anything next year, it's going to be Hellblade 2 because Project Mara, no one Now, knows I believe about. that because obviously the pandemic prevents large groups from being in, in buildings. Yes. Uh, especially at the beginning of it. And it really, well, Microsoft, it Microsoft really, just recently re- uh, lifted restraints and let people come back to the it, office that work for Microsoft. And so. it, it really hurt the mo capping areas. Yes. And a lot of Hellblade's mocap. So that's why I feel like that. that I feel like Hellblade's been pushed back a lot. Um, let's go to 2023. Because this is where it really gets interesting. <laughs> uh, Gears isn't coming out in 2023. Uh, that's coming 2024. Uh, Doom 3 is going to release then. Ever while, I don't even know what that game is still. Uh, but more than likely, it could release in 2023. Because that's two years from now. Um, Zenimax Online Unannounced Project. What is that? <laughs> Fable 2023. Nope. I, 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 I see 2024. I still think that they want to make sure that game is 100% right. Forza Motorsport. I do think, I think Forza Motorsport has a better chance being 2022. Yes. I think, than 2023. I, agree I think it's coming. I think that's year. coming next year. I don't, I don't see a reason because we saw Forza Motorsport literally last year in engine running. So that game, yeah, I think that game's 2022. Compulsion, um, what year did they release We Happy Few? Was that 2018? Yeah, 18. I can. So I can to be honest, I, I could see Compulsion maybe coming out next year. 2022. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It just depends on what's going on there. All right, so let me go over this. Doom, I think's done. I don't think they're making another Doom. Oh, you don't think they're uh, going to finish uh, out the Doom Slayer story? The way I've been told, the expansion that finished the Doom. It, uh, okay, because I haven't played. I haven't played. Yeah, the so you, they stuff, they yeah. might do something else, but I feel like that team. Uh, that's um idea, isn't it? Yes, it's it's software. Yeah, it's software. I think they're doing something else. I don't know. Gear Six. I think that's twenty twenty five. Yes, I agree. Hundred uh, percent. I don't think Gears has come out anytime soon. Uh, I feel like they're going to make another game first. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll finish Gears before they do. Because it's been a rumor for a long time they're working on a new IP. Well, I think they're going to work. I think they're going to they're start it and they're going to finish development on the first on the, on the game that's going to take a break away from Gears first. So I feel like Doom, it's like I said, Doom, Gears. Uh, I don't feel like Doom, Gears, Everwild. I think that's a 2024 game. Yeah, because um, I don't know what they get. Zenimax is. Online Unannounced Project, I think that could happen that year. I think 2023 is a good time for it that. Depends on what it is. Fables of 2024. Yep. Uh, Forza's coming out in 2022. Compulsion's a good thing. And Josh Shire Unannounced Project, uh, I don't know about that. That I might be either. 2023. So that that's, that's a solid thing right there. That could actually happen. And keep in mind, there's multiple studios working. For all we know, this, this list could have two or three more on each year because there's multiple studios making these games. So uh, I think we've, I think we've hit 2023 pretty good, right? You want to go to 2024? Yeah. Cause this is where it gets even crazier. Yeah. So notice they just start saying unannounced, unannounced project. Unannounced <laughs> games. So, okay. Right, so, so, okay. So in exile, I think 2024 is actually pretty good for them. They had in 2020, they released um they released um what's the name uh I forget the name of the game you played it um Wasteland Three huh yeah Wasteland, Wasteland Three they're they're uh, not making I, another Wasteland type game yeah then I think it's yeah, it's gonna be something different so I do think that end of 2024 it could slip to 2025 but I think it's a good chance that their next game could come out 2024 Outer Wars Two um oh man that was. Tw- they just released the latest DLC towards the end of the year, so that gives them four years. Um, if they, I think that's twenty twenty five, just because I think they're going to be even more ambitious with the game, especially with the market, the backing that Microsoft is giving them to be able to um, flesh out that game even more. It could be a holiday twenty twenty four game, but it might be an early, um, uh, uh, like a February March game in twenty twenty five, but. I'm going to stick with 2025 on that one. Perfect Dark, I think that game needs to release in 2024. I At a certain part, we didn't knew, we known about this studio. We known about them longer than anything, and Perfect Dark just needs to come. If they can't get Perfect Dark out the door by 2024, it's something really going on. 
Uh, Evil Within 3? Um, I don't even know if they're making that game. I don't even think they're making that game. They I might just, be. They might be. Because that, be. that is a successful game. It so. is. A, it's a very good franchise. I just don't know. I haven't heard anything about what that studio is. But you know what's crazy? Making. The fact that he's openly coming out and saying the the Outer Worlds two, he's openly coming out and saying Evil Within three, but then Arcane Austin he says unannounced project. If you're gonna go this left, you yeah. might as well put Dishonored three in that this spot. Might well Dishonored three up there, right? So yeah, so Roundhouse Studios unannounced game y- could yeah. What was what was their last game? Well, yeah. uh, I, I think that's a new studio, actually. Yeah, that's a new studio. That, I don't yeah. think they've made a game. If anything, that I think that game could come out sooner than sooner, that. Sooner, yeah. I, you would think Microsoft wanted to come out sooner. Roundhouse and, Studio. And then Double Fine, they're releasing Psychonauts um, this year. So depending on the scale of the game they want to go with, 2024 might be a good go for them. And Coalition, I think their next game is going to be... Tw- I think... If anything, their next game that they're working on right now, if it's um, to be le- to be believed, the game that is going to be um, not Gears of War, I think that's a good... 2023, I think, would be the year you would see that. Like, 2033, 20, early 24. Um, and then... But if they release a game in 2024, you're not seeing Gears 6 until 2026. Yeah. Okay. Here, here. If, if they release if this unannounced game project, because we know it says unannounced, meaning it's not Gears of War. If that game comes out, in, if this unannounced game comes in 2024, kiss Gears of War goodbye for the rest of this generation. You won't see it this year. You won't. It will be a launch title for the next generation. If they if they do this. All right. So let 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 me go over this one. Uh, the Exile, I think that's 2025 uh, because they have stated kind of that this isn't going to be a small game like Wasteland. Right, it's going exactly. to be like a Fallout level kind of game. Yeah. Uh, the Outer the Worlds 2, that'd be crazy if we get a Fallout spiritual success for, for I mean, hell, at this point, we might we might get a Fallout game from, from Exile because they own the Fallout franchise. Right. And, exactly. and then we get the Outer Worlds 2 of 2024. I'm going off Home Dogs list, okay? Right now, in my mind, this is facts. And then we get Perfect <laughs> Dart. We get the Evil Within 3. What I think Roundhouse Studio, they make a lot of mobile games, I think. I don't know. Uh, I don't know all of Bethesda studios like that. Double I Fine, don't I don't think Double Fine's making they stuff. I don't think it's going to take four years to make Double Fine's game. They don't really make big, massive games like that. That's why I said their game could come out in 2023. Uh, and then the Coalition Unannounced Project. I think that unannounced project, someone did say you could put Gears at 2025. They already said they're not working on it for a while. They are, they have smaller projects to help them better understand the Unrolled 5, and they're helping with Halo and another project. I think that other project is what he's referring to here, and I think that's coming out maybe next year. I don't think that's coming out. I think they've been yeah, working on that saying. game if for a while. If it comes out in 2024, they're definitely not bringing Gears in 2025. Yeah, and, and you know... What I like about this is, first off, I personally want Double Fine to make a, a Banjo Kazooie. That's me. That would be cool. I think they're one of the only studios besides Rare that can make a game like that successfully. We got a two dollars super chat from uh, J Dub is a shell. Are the PS fans paying attention to this list? I doubt it because this list is this list is fire. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy list, man. So let's go on to the to the to the grand finale. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lord. Elder Scrolls Six. This dude just put at the very end of the list because he has no idea when this game's coming out. <laughs> I mean, five, what's that, five years from now? If Starfield does release this year, if Starfield releases it, even if it releases next year, 2025 would be a reasonable time to say that I think we'll see a trailer. Hear about you should see by twenty twenty five. We'll see gameplay. We'll see what Elder Scrolls Six is. Yeah, we'll see gameplay. Uh, Yeah, we'll see gameplay. Who knows if it's actually so? Let's go over these individually. So uh, you say I think Elder Scrolls Five will see a trailer twenty twenty five. It come out twenty twenty six. Yeah, it comes out twenty twenty six. But it 
it could easily Microsoft could easily, easily ramp up production on this game by hiring more people, and it can yeah. come out in 2025 because they have been working on it. It's just it's a smaller team. It's not the whole. And it studio also comes yet. down to it, that's why I keep thinking with Bethesda. It really just comes down to this year. If they can still do what they normally do, announce a game, well, not announce it, show the game off, and then release it in the same year in the middle of a pandemic. Then yeah, that game possibly will come in 2025 because they can talk about it, show it, show gameplay, and say do the Fallout 4 and say it's here. All right, state of the K3. Do you it think that's it. coming out in 2025? Hell no, it's coming in 2023. Yes, 2023. Who I don't know what he was smoking. But That's I want a long it. Time, <laughs> like, bro. They like, showed that they showed that that teaser trailer like in twenty nineteen. Like this isn't PlayStation. I mean. Microsoft for the most part here recently don't announce a game and then like eight years later it comes out. Like for the most yeah. part, they're trying to stay away from that. So to say that State of the K three was announced in twenty twenty and it took one, two, three, four, five years for that sucker to come out. Yeah. is a very far stretch i don't think i think that's a 2023 2024 at at most yeah, at most yeah indiana jones where is it coming uh machine games is making that so um i i, I don't think 2025 is too far i think 2024 See, but keep in mind is, keep in mind we what are, are they, what else are they working on well it's not even just that keep in mind that microsoft owns a lot of studios now they they're do. still making for they're still making game pass scenarios they're still making yeah. timed exclusives we know about the kojima thing we know about the the dragon thing and the which is funny which none of that stuff's here none of it's here but you ain't gonna go into that so uh when is that indiana movie it, i know they were talking about making an indiana jones movie again Did, do we have any information on that i have no clue but because I would think, even knowing that the game's not going to be tied to it, because more than likely it won't be, they'll probably want to have, like, within a year, like how Spider-Man and um, and PlayStation had Spider-Man lined up within a year of it coming out. So I think it's closer to whenever that Indiana movie, Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford gets tied in, I think within a year of that, you're going to see Indiana so Jones release. What I was saying is, like, keep in mind, just because, like, you know, they might have a game done, but they're not going to put these games too, too close to each other. They're going to give no, some of them no. time breathing room. I mean, well, so, so they games, say they want to have a game every quarter. They want they to have, have a game every quarter. Game every they don't quarter. want to have two games every quarter. No, no, no. They want to have so, a big game every quarter. So I feel like some of these, like, obviously, if they don't make a Doom, which someone in the chat, that could happen. So if they make a different do type of Doom game, they make Gear 6, they make um, Compulsions game, I feel like you start adding these up, that's more games than they can use in one like little, little year. Because they're still having the the um, the IO Interactive game. They still have the Cyclone game. They still have these studios making multiple projects. So yeah. I feel like, logically, they're going to have to space them out. So some of these games might be literally done. And they have to push to the next year to yeah, make it make to the sense. Next year. To make sense, yeah. All right, so uh, Arcane's next project, I think that's the right. The yes, the, it is. That that could be Dishonored three, and this that could be, and this Arcane Austin could be something else. I think what, it, regardless, what that Arcane game is, it's not taking them five years to make something. Look, look, whoever made this list, the God of Wars don't take five years to make. You know why God of War took five years to make? You know why Halo's taking so long to make? They made mm -hmm. an engine on top of yeah. the game itself. Games yep. don't normally take this long to make. So mm -hmm. I see Arcane's game coming out in 2024. Yeah, I'm with you on that. What about the what about World's Edge? That's those are turn based or, or strategy RTS those games. Those are strategy RPGs, yeah. So I could see that 2023, 2024. No now, later. Now we have another Zenimax Media Online unannounced game project. <laughs> you know how what the, you know how easy what that is. You know how easy it is just to keep the, he just copy and paste that from 2020. Yeah, he was like, oh, I get, you know, this is gonna, <laughs> Zenimax is going to put out a new yeah. Game. He was putting this now, in, man. This now, is how, this is how this dude thought. He put this in here. Hey, this is he put it with no bulletins anything. He's like, man, this list looks pretty 
pretty. I'm going to put bulletins, man. I feel like bullet, everyone likes bulletins. They'll take everyone me more like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so the most interesting one on this list to me is the last one. 343 three, three, Industries, Industries Next, next project. project. Notice this see? dude didn't say gear Halo 6. Or yeah. <laughs> next project. Dude. Attic. Do we do we Halo think that three four three is gonna be making anything other than a Halo game? I do. I do. You do what do you think that Especially you, you think that if Halo Even Infinite. even with Halo having a ten year plan. Well see and this and this is still within I mean, De- five years of it. Destiny I feel like when Halo Infinite comes out, the first three years is, is the most important to that ten year plan. Because they right. want to structure how they want to have the game come out, how they want the information rolled out. I think by three years you think they're going to turn it over to a, a subsidiary team? I think... To manage it? I think all five of these years. First off, I do think 343 will probably have a game in 2024, 2025. But I don't think it's going to be Halo. I think it's going to be a smaller title with a Halo type of budget. But it's not going to be on the massive scale that Halo is, if that makes sense to you. So it's not going to be a Halo game? No, it's not. I think it's going to be a first-person shooter. I, I don't disagree with you. I don't think that... I, I think that all these studios should make something different. It's just that... That one of all of them just kind of like, are we just throwing stuff against the wall to see if it sticks? Yes, because that, 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 that's always the good thing to do, man. And it's like I said, I'm not clowning on the dude that made this. I, no, I actually it's, it's, I actually it's, it's like that he made point. it. I actually it's like he made it point. because when I saw this, I wanted to make a whole video on this thing. You should, Hey, well, you still can. This is this is the Iron Lord's channel, not the, um, not the Addicts channel. <laughs> But okay, so you could, let, you could one minute on each each year. So there out of all this video. stuff here, let's say this list is accurate. Let's say this is the divine Xbox list. What uh-huh. title on here makes you most excited? Ah oh, man, because at, at the end me... of the day, I don't feel like he's wrong. I just feel right. like he doesn't know what years some of these games are coming. He just threw them in a random year. Like, I yeah. do feel like, for the most part, these are the games that Microsoft's making, besides all the... I'm about yeah. to say State of Decay 3, man, because State of Decay, they need to prove themselves, and I feel like State of Decay can be that game to do it. If they make a State of Decay 3 and it capitalizes on every corner you could think of, I think it will pr- improve people's is your, perception on it. Is your streams... Is your stream it's going good? It's going on. Right now it says excellent. We're about to end it anyway. I apologize oh, okay, for that, yeah. you guys. That's why I'm trying to finish this up. Um, I Right now on my end, it says it's not buffering anymore. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. We're about to end it anyway. Uh, and, and like I said, uh, I think Fable is the most important one here. Because I think Fable...